and the astronaut crew uh, in the process of getting ready for breakfast again. Uh, Ox Van Hoften, Dick Covey, the pilot for this mission, Commander Joe Engel. This is the third time for this sort of breakfast. Uh, Dr. Bill Fisher, mission specialist, and, Doc, and Mike Lounge, uh, the MS-2. At the crew quarters on the third floor of the ONC building, the crew walking out of their quarters and entering the elevator for the trip down to the uh, bottom floor. Joe Engel, commander, being the last one of the crew to go in, followed by John Young, uh, who is chief of the astronaut office, and other members of the team. Uh, a group of well-wishers still waiting on the ground floor, along with the news media, uh, for the crew to come out despite the, uh, the inclement weather and rain that we have had in the area uh, all through the morning. On the, uh, the first morning, there were a number of signs. It's quite possible this time you're going to see some happy birthdays because Commander Engel's birthday, 53rd birthday, was yesterday. And the crew on its way out of the, uh, into the van, the van drawn up very close, uh, Commander Engel leading the way, uh, followed by Dick Covey and the three mission specialists, uh, John Young, the chief of the astronaut corps, uh, following that up. And the Astro van uh, will be proceeding to the pad uh, where they will have the option of the crew remaining in the van uh, prior to actually going to the elevator and ascending to the 195-foot level uh, where the walkway is to get them to the orbiter. That will depend on the weather at the pad at that time. This is Mission Control Houston at uh, T-minus nine minutes in holding. The uh, ascent flight director, Gary Cohen, has polled the positions in the flight control room, and the operators have given a go for launch. Of course, the uh, concern remains the weather, and the uh, flight directors continue to get weather updates as we uh, watch the launch situation this morning. An additional uh, go-no-go decision uh, poll being taken in the room at the present time. And all positions uh, have given uh, Flight Director Cohen a uh, go for uh, launch this morning. Again, uh, still observing the weather. T-minus nine minutes in holding. This is Mission Control, Houston. Coming up on the 31 second point, and we have a go for auto sequence start. And we have auto sequence start with the sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds up to launch. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of A51I and a commercial deploy and repair mission. It has cleared the tower. Roger, roll, Discovery. Roll program initiated. Houston now controlling. Roger that. Beginning throttle down now to 65%. Three engines throttling down now to 65%. Altitude three nautical miles. Three engines in the throttle down condition to manage the uh, maximum aerodynamic pressure as the uh, spacecraft approaches uh, max Q at 743 pounds per square foot. Mission Control, Houston, uh, one hour, 40 minutes for mission elapsed time. Uh, the Houston, you have a go for orbit ops. Outstanding, Mike, thank you. 
And a reminder, Joe, uh, no self-test on the minus Y star tracker, please. You bet you. We already got that pencil in, but thanks for the reminder. Roger. Discover Houston, go ahead. You bet, Mike. Uh, you've got the cameras down there, and we've got the, uh, the arm rolled out now. I might suggest that you take the elbow camera and uh, take a look at the offset sun shield from that position. We've not had a chance to do that yet, but uh, when you get enough light, that might uh, show where, the, uh, where it rubbed there. Houston. Roger, Houston. Roger, Houston. Go ahead. Roger, Joe. Uh, as soon as you uh, finish the RMS checkout, uh, and we'd like you to expedite that as much as you can, we'd like to move the arm up and uh, position it so that we can look down on top of the uh, offset sun shield and see if we can get a planar view of uh, what it's hung up on using the end effector camera. Hey, Mike, I've finished the checkout uh, through. I can uh, defer that and give you the camera view now. Uh, Houston Discovery, we just got an ABE light for the RMS. We copied ABE light. Discovery, Houston, with you through Hawaii. Okay, Bob, and we're, uh, Mike is positioning the arm right now. The, uh, the technique that we're uh, suggesting and setting up for is to drop the end effector down in between the two pan shield, sun shields and uh, to uh, line up the, uh, the light on the top of the camera uh, just uh, so that it catches the sun shield and then uh, roll the end effector and uh, use that technique to push back by using the roll on the end effector and just push back on the aft part of the sun shield. Roger, we copy that. Uh, one thing we would recommend, uh, along with the technique, is to make sure that you uh, keep the arm in, uh, in direct when you actually make the push. That'll keep the uh, joints from back driving. Discover Houston. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Roger. Uh, we are a little bit uncomfortable with using the light on that. Is there some possibility you could use the uh, EVA handrail uh, as your uh, point of contact? That's a good idea, Bob. We'll try that. Mike has uh, got the aft end of the sun shield pushed back to where it's about aligned. It, the sun shield was actually skewed uh, with the forward end farther open than the aft end, and he's got it just about even now. And I think uh, once we push just a little more on the aft end, uh, we'll come around to the front end and push on it a little bit. The sun shield has opened uh, about two or three inches. Okay, we copy that. Discover Houston. All right, go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, if uh, you need to get a little bit more torque out of the arm uh, there, you can actually go ahead and go to single. We don't think it'll uh, back drive the elbow pitch, and you'll get uh, more torque in single drive. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for that. We'll go ahead and do that. Discovery? Discovery, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Magic Mike got it open. He got it lifted off the, uh, got it lifted off the offset, and now we're in the process of pitching the... Uh, the uh, Sun shield all the way open, and it uh, looks like it's probably going to stay open. Okay. Okay, sounds real good to us, Joe. Uh, and a cleanup item when you could get the star trackers back to track. Okay. Okay, you should have a picture now. Uh, I'm seeing the spin up. And we've got good downlink. Glad to see it go.
Charlie, do you have any word on how the Apache burn went? Stand by. We'll see whether we can get anything for you on that, Mike. And Discovery Houston, uh, it'll be about an hour before we get any uh, information on that. Okay, thanks. Copy, loud and clear. Roger, and we have a, a good picture of ASC. Thank you. Let me know when you've got us, Dave. Okay, Bill, we've got you now. Okay, what we're doing is just beginning the SVU in-cabin checkout. Um, what you see up here are the two cabin checkout boxes we've just installed on the lockers. And for those of you that have never seen an SVU before, take a good look. Uh, probably never see another one. Um, we're going to install these two on the lockers and uh, begin our checkout. It'll probably take about uh, two hours to check out each box. Okay. And we'll be watching you periodically as we get a chance to take TV. Yeah, Houston, I hope somebody's just coming to work there uh, this morning and looking up. I guess we're, we're in the sunlight now, and I guess you're still dark down there, aren't you? At the firm, it was fairly well published that you guys are going overhead uh, right now, and uh, hopefully some people are out there are able to watch you. Unfortunately, we don't have any a glass roof in this house here. Okay, David. Um, we're on step 11, page 2-21, doing the power off status checks. Uh, so far, uh, Prime SBU has not had any anomalies, and, uh, you know, we're just working on through this. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, we've just completed uh, step 11 on the SBU checkout for the Prime SBU. Uh, we're 
ready to go to step 12, SBU power down, EVA stowage. Looks like uh, SBU 1 checks out fine. We'll proceed on to SBU 2. Okay, we copy, and it sounds good to us, Bill. Press on. This guy here is an RPU, and we've just, we're just putting the second battery in it. This is the prime unit. And uh, after we've finished, we've finished all the battery charging, and for these guys, we're charging the third one in the suit right now, but as far as the... As far as the RM, uh, RPUs go, this is the uh, the final battery installation. We'll be ready to proceed with checkout. Go ahead, Mike. Well, while we've got a TV picture, let me show you something we found uh, cleaning the DEU screens. This is obviously a screen from some black box that came loose. We found it sitting on the screen for DEU number two. Uh, so I guess the IFM folks can think about where that came from. Okay, well, we've got a, a good picture of it. I don't know that anybody's going to claim it right offhand, but uh, we see what you're talking about. Bob, if you got a picture still, you can see the uh, macro lens here. I'm getting it pretty close. I don't know if you're going to be able to read it or not, but we'll see. Okay, uh, getting a tremendous picture of that. Uh, and uh, I, we'll just have to wait and see how the display shows up. But uh, the picture looks uh, really good, and it's a uh, very clear present presentation. How about yourselves? You ready for another day in a CINCOM deploy?
believe if you got a picture of the start of it, that's fine. If not, we'll go back and give you a little more lead time. Roger, we've got what uh, we need. It looks good. It's kind of hard to believe there's going to be someone hanging on to one of those things in a couple of days. Boy, it looks a lot bigger close up, I'll tell you. It looks big enough from here on the TV screen. Joe, you can, uh, you can back it up and show us again, and we just got some preliminary tracking data, and it looks like the uh, PKM burn of CINCOM was very good. Outstanding. And Houston, as you can see, it looks like several circul circulatory patterns that are not quite organized into one yet. If they ever decide to join up, it ought to be a good one. Roger that. The Florida Panhandle and Alabama and some places are getting a little bit worried about it. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, Bob, I don't know uh, how well you can see it. We're passing directly over Kauai now. We've got a good shot of the Nepali coast and Nihihau, a lot of contrails down there. Uh, we're coming up uh, over Oahu, and we can look and see Molokai. Uh, there's, um, there's Maui. There's Maui and Lanai, and uh, we can see the whole chain right here. There's the big island. Roger, we've got a, a really great picture of that. It's uh, coming in very clear, and uh, we appreciate the travel log. Sounds like you've been there. Tell who the best looking one is anyway. Hey, it's the story, baby one out of your eight. E B 
31, Houston, you're loud and clear, Ox. Okay. And Houston Discovery EV2, how do you hear me, David? Houston Discovery for EV2, you're loud and clear, Bill. Okay, you're likewise. And Discovery Houston, we have good biomed data. You can reconfigure the comp. Roger. Airlock pressure now is uh, 5.28 PSI. Holding steady as they do leak checks on the uh, EMUs 1 and 2 on the spacesuits. Also discovery at uh, about 300 feet from CENTCOM. Houston, you're two minutes to LOS Tedris. We'll talk to you next at Guam at 124. And uh, tell Ox and Bill they're looking good for EVA. And we won't be able to talk to you at Yargadee because of your EVA comm config. Okay, they're feeling good. Roger, we were waiting for that call. Often on the MFR now at the bar stowage assembly where he will pick up the uh, capture and grapple bars.
Okay, Houston, shaping levers in. Next problem is what do I do with this motor? degrees to go. on the camera in Houston, that was one that y'all turned on. Okay, thanks. I don't care what attitude it's in, Joe, I can... Ox, you see the slight drop. Yeah, I know, I know.
Okay, I'm board a little bit. Okay, God well. some maneuvers than it is for us to move some yeah, of these things out. I know. I guess you can probably get hold of it and push it. Okay, the safe and arm lever here is at the safe position. I'll do that. Yeah, that's clear. 
Okay, Omni, deploy, fire. Omni, fire. Here she comes. Looking good. Looking good, buddy. All right. Hot dog, look at that, Jack. Omni, deploy off. Omni, deploy coming off. And the RDU relay enabled to charge. RDU relay enabled, come and charge, Mark. Okay, check your uh, relay A and B lights on. Both on. Okay, RDU relay enabled to off. It's off. And you can be made to harness from the spacecraft. Okay, Mike, I need to come back down to where I was. Your arms aren't that long? No, sir. Might be a little difficult with the, with the Omni there. That's a good point. And Houston, we're going to take the uh, spacecraft to the uh, park position. Okay, we copy. Looks like good work. Shocks. RPM, Ox. Here's the punch more. Good roll, Ox. Very little coning. Hey, if you can get me down over there, we can get her again, Joe. Keep her job, Joe. Back up, back up a little bit. Back down. Back up. Okay, stop. 
That's at least two. Okay, one more push. Good measure. Okay, that's good. Back me up, back me up, back me up. Okay, let's give it up. That looked good. Houston, five and a half minutes now prior to acquisition with Discovery after she exits the S-band blackout. And a correction to that status report on CINCOM F3, the present rotational rate is 24 RPM, not 26, 24 RPM. That's down upcoming in 19 and a half minutes at Edwards Air Force Base, and this is Mission Control, Houston. Mission Control Houston, we're standing by for acquisition with Discovery. Meanwhile, out at Edwards Air Force Base, John Young now flying a weather approach to uh, runway 23 at Edwards. Now processing TDRS data. Uh, we're still looking at it, Joe. Roger. And Discovery Houston, energy and ground track look good, Joe. Okay, very good. We've got our tech hands coming in now. 
altitude 16,000 feet now, velocity 587 feet per second, descending at a rate of 158 feet per second. Discovery now. We're rolling out on final and it looks beautiful. Roger, Joe, we copy. And your winds are 250 at 17, gusting to 21. Roger that. Discovery now on final to runway 23. Altitude 10,000 feet. Descending at 172 feet per second. Predicted touchdown speed 195 knots. And Discovery Houston, we show you slightly below glide slope and slightly right of center line. Okay. Altitude 5,300 feet, descending 157 feet per second. Velocity 546 feet per second. About 285 knots. Less than a thousand feet now. Gear doors open, gear coming down. Gear locked. Touchdown on main gear. Discovery rolling out now at 195 knots and touchdown on nose gear. Discovery now coming to a stop on runway 23. Mechanical systems officer reports braking looks moderate on discovery and looking good. And we show wheel stop. Crew of Discovery now coming out of the uh, vehicle, led by Joe Engel, the commander. Being uh, greeted by George Abbey, the director of flight crew operations at the Johnson Space Center.